So what does it mean for our, because I always like to bring it home to the folks, like what it means for their money today. Hyperinflation. What does it mean? For, like what happens to our money? It hyperinflates away. There's no other option. We're hyper deflates. That's the other option. You know, but, but whether you're looking at deflation or inflation, it's the same coin. It's just the opposite side. So if they can get us into the CBDCs, the central bank digital currencies, what they are saying is that, number one, they're going to present it like, hey, we will eliminate inflation. If you give us this control over that, there won't be any more inflation. No, there will be deflation because, as they say, there are then no limits to how low they can push interest rates. And what does that do? But it eats your principal. So you're sitting there, you haven't been spending money because you're trying to save, but you're watching your principal go down, down, down. What are you likely to do? Go out and put it in anything that you think can hold its purchasing power value better than the currency. So that's hyper deflation. You know, what do you make of when you hear, you know, like the Democrats came out saying, well, the mess we're in um, is linked back to the rollback that President Trump, Trump did of the Dodd-Frank Act. Uh, is that just, I mean, what's your take on well, that? It's true, but it goes back even further than that. It goes back to when Clinton eliminated the Glass-Steagall Act. And the Glass-Steagall Act was put in place in 1933 to separate risk-taking Wall Street banks from deposit-taking mom-and-pop banks. And so I think it was 96 when that was eliminated and allowed those two banking entities to merge. And I haven't heard one person not in the Senate committees or, or in any of the government committees or central banks talk about separating those two entities. So they don't want to because this is about the banks and the, and the financial system, but also, you know, yeah. It, but in what, what Trump did was he took away oversight essentially from those mid-sized banks. So there are a lot of check boxes that they just did no longer need to check. But even when they put Dodd-Frank in place in 2010, that was supposed to eliminate that proprietary trading, and it didn't, the Volcker rule. They, they dismantled the Volcker rule. So they took away oversight and they dismantled, dismantled rules because as they said, well, wow, we've had six years of experience and nothing has happened. So this is a good thing to do but they never talk about the real issue, which is risk-taking banks using depositor monies to take those risks. And, which leads me to my next point, uh, because your bigger thesis um, says that this just fast-tracks us to central bank digital currencies. Yes. And one thing I wanted to talk about today was this new uh, Fed Now payment system mm -hmm that apparently is coming this July. And I'm just quoting an article here. It says, as a result, many banks will now see it as a larger, safer system, able to transfer money faster for co consumers and businesses. This is a quote from Fed Chair Powell. Fed now will enable all the banks, any bank in the US, not just the big ones, to offer instantly available funds and real-time payments to their customers. So trying to you know reestablish confidence this system is unbreakable it's safe you can trust us what do you make of the timing of all this <laughs> not a coincidence <laughs> and you know and actually the fed now accounts were put in place i think it was 2019 well before today that they're actually getting officially rolled out in july but you know we just don't see all of the work behind it's like living in Oz, right? Don't look at the man behind the exactly. curtain. Just trust us. But how can you trust these people that have gotten us into this position? And I, and I, you know, I can't give you guarantees, but if I could, I'm going to tell you that if you, if we don't vote with our purses and position into physical metals that are outside of the system, your choices will be less and your life will be worse. Let me ask, and this may be a big question, uh, but I just I just thought of it, Lynette. Because we we often 
wonder, you know, uh, do these people in power know what they're doing? So if we look at central bank digital currencies, we'd say there was a clear strategy to lead us to this road, Absolutely. right? On the flip side, when we talk de-dollarization, we wonder, does the U.S. not see what's happening with countries turning their backs on the U.S. dollar, wanting to dump their U.S. dollars, and then we say we should, we hope that there's some sort of strategy in place to preserve the U.S. dollar. Uh, so are they being strategic on that end as well? Well, you know, it was back in you know, the, the, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, created the SDR, Special Drawing Rights, in 69 to take over as the world reserve currency from the U.S. dollar at that time. But then Kissinger right. went and created the petrodollar, which is, to your point, falling apart right now. And so we retained that privilege. But we have been, actually, it was December 2002, when we no longer had enough foreign buyers of our bonds and the Federal Reserve started buying back our treasury bonds. That was 2002, right? So we make this assumption that we want things to continue to go on, but when you know you're at the very end of the road, then do you really want it to go on or do you want a controlled demolition that keeps you in power? Right. Okay. And so right. I think what we're going to see here is a very localized currency. And yeah, de-dollarization, this is not something that just started. And so right. Right. if you look at the way that the U.S. has handled uh, Russia kicking them out of the SWIFT system and, and just exporting the inflation to the world, I mean, they have to know that they're not being considerate, gentle, kind, or in any other way encouraging the world to allow us to retain that privilege. You know, you gave me goosebumps with that statement because I think you're onto something there, Lynette. Um, if we do see the de-dollarization and, you know, the demise of the U.S. dollar and someone argue it's already here, okay, that's a separate conversation that they would still be in control with whatever replaces that. And that makes a lot of sense. Right. I mean, that, that, that is the goal. And keep in mind that the system to replace the dollar on a global scale has already been not just put in place over at the IMF, it's called the Substitution Fund, but it, it, it is a way that if you are a country or a corporation outside of the U.S. and you're holding U.S. dollar-denominated assets or instruments, you can deposit it into that substitution mm -hmm. fund, and then they can convert that those assets into SDR-denominated assets and, in theory, control the speed at which those dollars go back to the U.S., so again, a, a controlled demolition, but can they really do exactly. it? Exactly. That, that's the question. Uh, that's a really good point. 